chapter 11 deals with industry and energy and one of the central photographs in this chapter is this photo right here this is James Watt's steam engine and I think of it as the beginning of the Industrial Revolution remember it started in Great Britain in the mid 1700s and and this is the beginning and one of the things it did is it helped the coal industry by pumping water out from the mines and so no longer did you have to go out and cut down trees to, uh, to heat things you could um, you could use the the pump to get the water out of the mine during that time we had the putting out system so people were located out in villages and hamlets and somebody on horseback would ride out and take some cotton to these people and they would come back later and hopefully the cotton had been turned into a shirt and you can see that it was kind of a hit and miss um, operation there wasn't any quality control and with this steam engine you had the beginnings of making cities bigger so this urbanization this rural to urban migration which is still going on uh, was starting then and so it's the beginning of factories being in cities and so what that does is pull people from the outlying areas so this is the beginning the precursor of urbanization and remember the demographic transition that we've talked about countries go through over a couple of hundred year period a process of a high birth rate and a high death rate with not much growth down to a low birth rate and a low death rate with a bigger population but also a slower growing one so all of these things are, are beginning here and it is the beginning of the industrial revolution and as I've said elsewhere the Americans were one of the first to pick the ball up and run for a touchdown so we have been the primary beneficiaries look at this graph it's like wow I can't believe it um, to me this is an amazing statistic so 50 percent of the output is produced by us Germany Japan and China I actually didn't know that to me that's just an astounding statistic and um, it sure makes you think so the first part of the chapter deals with the primary industrial regions in uh, the world and we see that Europe the US and China and Japan would be those three so let's look at them so here we are in in Europe <coughs> and <coughs> you can see in the United Kingdom that we go from Glasgow down to Birmingham that would be the area of industrialization the Rhine Ruhr area is also uh, a big industrial area that was uh, available because of the iron and steel that was close by and Rotterdam here is the biggest port in Europe uh, leads from the Rhine to the North Sea um, and you also see over here in the Volga area in Russia this whole area here it was part of Hitler's uh, plan for invading Russia because he wanted the oil and the gas and so we see the other the other places in Europe located uh, for various reasons here in the United States we see that the Chicago area at one time was a big hub and we know that Pittsburgh um, was a big coal producing area it was located there because they had uh, coal and they had iron ore and they had water transportation so I know that any of you that are fans of the Pittsburgh Steelers the Three River Stadium the Monongahela the Allegheny and the Ohio uh, so all of that provided uh, water transportation and we, we know that water transportation is the cheapest for um, if you have a big bulky heavy item here in East Asia we see the Tokyo Yohama area and the Kobe Osaka area are important places of industrialization um, Hong Kong and Guangdong province uh, Guangzhou is the uh, capital of Guangdong province I have a, an interesting story so I, I was up in Xi'an Xi'an is somewhere around here at the fork in the river and I had bought a, um, a needle point that was a, a of the Chinese emperor who united China I can't ever say his name correctly I think I, I say it a uh, Chuan Du and I'm sure that's probably not right but it anyhow so this needlepoint probably has a hundred different stitches in it and maybe 50 different colors in it and it takes a single woman two or three months to make this thing 
and <clears throat> the person that was going to sell it to me was in the floor below, and um, she had dirty hands and greasy hands and so messed up the white fabric, uh, the white canvas, and then she put it down on the uh, glass top table and put her elbows on it and creased it uh, right across the main part of the um, of the canvas. And I mentioned that just because they had no idea what business meant and, and what customers wanted. When you got down here to Guangdong province, Guangzhou, they understood perfectly. So they were uh, a light year ahead of the rest of China in terms of understanding capitalism and understanding markets and understanding what consumers want. Um, you see some other areas here from Wuhan to Shanghai and from Beijing up here to Shenzhen. Um, so they would all be in the eastern part of the country, and that would be the pattern that you see here from this map. Thanks. Bye.